All right. So I just got finished sorting my uh, Dubia Roach colony, which is one of the, uh, this is actually my main colony. I have a lot of mediums growing up. My smalls, as you can see, I got a lot of smalls. I'm super excited. My roach production has just been skyrocketing. Woo. That is thick. That's so thick, I can't even get to the base of it. I think we got way more than two thousand. So this is my first time ever sorting out this colony. No idea what to expect. So I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to uh, harvest a lot of baby vegetables in this colony. So this is the colony that I started with. And discoids are another Florida legal roach. So it's a small colony. But I'm focusing in on this colony now, and you know what they say? Where attention goes, energy flows. What's going on world? Peace, love, Pagonas. Okay, so today's video is all about roach sorting, okay? I'm gonna show you guys three different species of roach. We got dubia, discoids, orange heads. Uh, gonna sort them out, and I'm gonna give you an update on those dubia that we sort, sorted out and separated uh, in a prior video. For those of you who haven't caught that video, don't worry, I'm gonna put the uh, link in the description. Um, but we're gonna see how those guys have grown. And uh, of course, I'm going to share a few tips and tricks with you guys to uh, getting your colony where you want it to be. All right. So I just got finished sorting my uh, Dubia Roach colony. This is one of the, uh, this is actually my main colony. The only uh, baby producing colony that I have at the moment. Um, just got finished sorting these guys and cleaning their bin, as you can see. And uh, man, I have a lot of mediums. As you know, it's time for an update to show you those uh, smalls that I sorted out about two months ago and see how big they've gotten. But they're they're a little bit bigger than this. So these are mediums. I'll probably just be adding these right on into the colony. I mean, into those mediums. And then growing up, my smalls, as you can see, I got a lot of smalls. I'm super excited. My roach production has just been skyrocketing. Big thanks to Rapeshi. All right, so let's pour in these mediums. Look at that, all on the back of the bucket. That's a pretty decent, decent amount of mediums. I'm gonna weigh these just to see how many we have in grams. All right, got the scale on. Okay, 100 grams, I'll take it. 100 grams of mediums. Whew. That is thick. That's a lot of small dubia. That's a lot of small dubia. I mean, that's so thick, I can't even get to the base of it. I think we got way more than 10,000 in this one. And this harvest. And like I said, uh, I try to harvest my uh, dubias every uh, two months. So it's, it's been a little more than two months, about uh well not really i last harvested it on uh what uh march the 15th so now it's uh may like may the 18th 19th 
but my production has just been skyrocketing lately. Like I said, I've been really focusing in on the roaches and up in my production, so I'm making sure they keep Rep Repeshi, uh, Bug Burger readily available, um, giving them lots of fresh fruit as well, and occasional snack or two here and there. You know, uh, when I say snack, stuff like uh, Frosted Flakes, uh, Honey Nut Cheerios, I even throw a little uh, old fashioned oatmeal in there. Huh? You know, you got a couple of my little tips and tricks. And it's been working because this is, this seems like way more than I harvested uh, two months ago. And, you know, some of you are probably thinking, like, well, shouldn't it be more if your colony keeps growing? But I actually take out all of the smalls from my colony and start new colonies with them. So basically, dubia females produce uh, roughly 30 babies every 60 days. Okay? They give birth every 60 days, so that's why I do two months apart um, with my uh, harvest. So technically, I should be I should be yielding the same thing every time. And uh, I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna show you guys the uh, colony that I harvested two months ago. If you guys remember that video, and um, show you how much they've grown. But that was about 350 something grams. So let's see how much this weighs. Before I throw these guys on a the scale, I always like to throw them in a the bin first just to get see if. Uh, you know, just see how it looks stretched out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That is, oh man, that's crazy. That is a good harvest right there. And I've actually been buying dubia roaches uh, from external sources to feed off to my dragons just so I can preserve my own harvest to grow up into new colonies. Because ultimately my goal is to completely to, to become completely self-sustaining with my roaches and feeders for my animals um, and not have to purchase from anyone else to feed my animals, which will, also, which will not only allow me to uh, be more hands-on with my dragon's nutrition, because as I say all the time, what you feed your feeders is what you feed your dragons. You understand what I'm saying? But um, also it'll make me more profitable as a business. And as you guys know, we're trying to go from the basement to a building this year. And in order to do that, we're going to definitely need to become as profitable as possible, okay? My secondary goal after becoming uh, completely self-sustaining is to actually be able to provide you guys uh, with feeders. Uh, that way I can, uh, you know, help you guys ensure that you're getting the optimal nutrition. Yeah, this is a really nice harvest. I mean, that looks good. And these are some big smalls. <laughs> these aren't no little smalls. Like I said, I've been feeding them well, gut loading them constantly with uh, Repeshi. And I don't even really consider it a gut load because it's actually a complete diet. Um, but giving them lots of Repeshi Bug Burger. Ruthless with the plug. And uh, fruits, uh, vegetables, um, and uh, like I said, a few other snacks here and there. You know what I mean? A little junk food occasionally. But um, yeah, now that I got them stretched out, let's see what they weigh on the scale. All right, so we got the scale. Let's fire that bad boy up. Time for me to get a new battery too, guys. My scale's starting to battery's starting to die. But uh, as I said before, this is definitely a tool that you want to have on deck if you are working with bearded dragons or working with any reptiles, really. And uh, even if you're just working with feeders, a scale serves many purposes. It definitely comes in handy, um, whether it's weighing your dragons and keep. And that's something that's important: weighing your dragons, seeing how they're growing, seeing how they're progressing. Um, and also weighing your feeders, uh, which is a good way to count feeders. Once you know how much uh, certain feeders weigh, like say you have 100 small dubia, you do that a couple times, you come up with an average weight for 100 small dubia, that's a great way to count your smalls. Instead of counting thousands of smalls, I, I mean, which I, I've never done personally, but I'm sure some people have tried to. Uh, but yeah, definitely wanna have one of these scales on deck. I'll put a link in the description for you guys if you wanna purchase your own scale and at the same time support the channel. Uh, once again, all the affiliate links in the description uh, do help support the channel. And we really, really appreciate all of you all's support. Like I said, we're trying to go from the basement to a building this year, guys. And we really appreciate your support and help getting there. Okay, so let me go ahead and throw these uh, smalls that we just harvested on the scale. Super excited. Now, I'm betting that this is around 400 uh, grams. Oh wow, we just passed for, oh wow. Woo.
Hold on, that's not it, guys. Let me shake some of these down. But we're already at 524 grams. That's crazy. No! Oh, the scale went off. Sheesh. That's what I mean when I say I need a new battery. Alright, let me see if I can transfer these to another bowl and then just throw these back in here. And don't worry, we're going to double check this because I don't trust this big Tupperware container on top of the, uh... But that's cashing out at 544 right there. So look at that. We went to 545. When two months ago our harvest was at 350 grams, we're now at 545. So almost a, uh... Or yeah, just about a 50% increase. Uh, on our harvest, that's good. Fifty percent increase. I mean, sheesh, that's a lot of roaches. And and basically, how I do it is, like I said, I uh, measure. I measure. Uh, I come up with an average per thousand, and the average per thousand for small roaches this size for me is about thirty-five grams. So well over ten thousand. Um, I have to do my exact math to let you know what what that is exactly but uh let's just see 10,000 would be 350 that leaves us with 195 so about 15,000 something I put the exact number in the video I don't I don't know I'm talking about I'm not a calculator or am I you know what I mean but uh yeah close to 15,000 we'll see how close I am let's just double check that weight though tear this Make sure you tear it. Make sure you got it at zero when you drop your doobie in there. I feel like this one's going to give us a way more accurate uh, account. Well, they're, they're both hitting on the same thing, so. Drop your doobie in there. They're both hitting on the same thing. So, yeah, 545. I'm not mad even a little bit. Can't wait to grow this up. And like I said, my goal with this colony is just to grow this entire harvest up into adults so they can start producing. And then I can have more and more bins producing this for me every two months. Um, basically, want to get to the point where I'm producing millions of uh, dubia every uh, month. Every, I mean, every two months. I'm sorry. So that way I can have enough to feed all of my mini dragons and to also help you guys feed your mini dragons. All right. So let's go ahead and get these guys set up in the colony. And I got to say, like I said, I think a big part of the increase in production I've seen comes from me consistently feeding the Rapeshi Bug Burger. Uh, you guys see me put the commercials in the videos all the time. Great product, guys. I highly recommend it. And then I also, uh, like I said, I still offer fresh, fresh fruits and veggies. Uh, as far as the veggies, really the only vegetable I offer is carrots. Um, but I do offer a lot of uh, like melons, uh, oranges. Uh, plums, pears, apples. Um, I find apples and oranges to be the best because they're, they're the least expensive for the most part. Um, but if I can like get a good deal on um, oranges, I mean on uh, plums or pears, I'll throw those in there. Throw those in there too. And I've even been putting in some fresh oats uh, for the uh, roaches. So that's another little tip for you guys. But um, yeah, happy about that. All right, so we got the tub all set up. Got my egg crates. Egg crates is another thing that's good to have in bulk, just lying around the house. Never know when you're going to need them. Serves in many situations. You can use them as props for your bearded dragons, for your hatchlings. Uh, you can use them for your bugs. I'll put a link in the description for you guys if you're looking for a good place to get egg crates. I uh, want to get them, you know, at a good price. And now, nah, got our big healthy block of Rapeshi. Now, this isn't. Rapeshi 
Bug Burger. That's one of the beautiful things that I love about Rapeshi. Uh, you know, all my roaches will eat it. Whether it's the Bug Burger, whether it's the Grub Pie, whether it's the Veggie Burger, whether it's the Beardy Buffet, and this is actually a block of uh, Beardy Buffet, which is basically a cross between Grub Pie and Veggie Burger. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there. They absolutely love it. Now let's go ahead and get our roaches poured in. And here we go, folks. Look at that. Welcome home, babies. Grow up, get big, and be ready to do it all over again. Let's get it. I can't tell you how good this harvest is. I mean, what? 545 grams? And just because I like to slice it a little bit, let's just go ahead and say 550. Hit that 55 on it. Yeah, there we go. So, yep, yeah, we'll go ahead and let them get settled in. I'll probably throw some fresh fruit in here. Um, I don't really feed the babies oranges. Like I said, if they're small or uh, if they're not, you know, adults, adult roaches mean they're not going to be reproducing. I don't, I don't give them the uh, the more expensive stuff. I give them stuff like carrots because those are cheap. You get a big bag of carrots for two dollars, three dollars. And I happen to live uh, close to a local farm, so I get a lot of uh, fresh produce for a very good price, and a lot of it's organically grown. You know, anywhere I can improve on my practice, I try to. You should do the same, okay? Always be trying to step your game up. But yeah, can't wait to see these guys grow up. And uh, like I said, today's gonna be a busy day. I got a lot of roaches to sort. We gotta go ahead and get to the discoids. Probably gonna mess with the orange heads today. Um, I already started shorting some discoids. I didn't show you guys that, Colin, but that was a monster harvest. I'll show you the results of it. And um, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and let these guys get settled in and grow up. And uh, two months from now, when it's time to do the next harvest, I'll update you on this colony. But in the meantime, I'll update you on the colony that we harvested two months ago. All right, so here's the colony that we harvested two months ago. As you can see, they've grown up quite a bit, putting some nice size on. Okay. And for those of you who didn't see that video, uh, you guys should definitely check it out. It's actually a series of videos. It's a four uh, four video mini series, uh, but well worth the watch, I think. Um, you know, I try to make every video entertaining and not just drag it out. So, uh, but yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and actually sort these guys as if I were trying to uh, separate them, even though I'm not gonna separate them. I'm just gonna sort them. And once I sort them, I'm going to basically be able to separate them from all of the frass that I had put in here with them initially. But just showing you guys the size. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually, after I uh, sift them out, I'm going to I'm going to weigh them just like I weighed those uh, smalls and mediums I just harvested and see how much this colony has grown weight wise. So if you remember from the video, I harvested about 350 something grams of smalls. And I have kept my word, which I'm quite proud of myself. I haven't fed any of the roaches all from this colony. Um, haven't fed any of the roaches all from this colony. I've just, let, I've just been letting them grow up with the hopes of this becoming an adult colony soon. And, um, you know, being able to help me produce more roaches. Look at that. Really putting on some size. That's, that's good. I feel good about this. But I'm going to weigh them just to see... Uh, you know, what I would, uh, what, you know, how much they've grown as far as weight. Like, I'm hoping, I'm imagining, just based on the size, like, look how big this guy is right here. This was a small at one point. Look at that one. You know? So these are mediums now. And, um, for the most part, most of them are. There's still a few smalls in here I see walking around. But what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, weigh them and see. And I'm hoping that they have doubled at least in weight. So there's 350 grams should have turned into 700 grams at least. This is my first time uh, being this uh, meticulous as far as my roach harvesting and, and keeping up with the weights, etc. And 
All right, so we didn't quite double in weight. We went from 350, I think it was 351, to uh, 573, which isn't bad at all. I'm not complaining. But the crazy thing is the harvest that I just had is equivalent to weight, and that's small, so can't even imagine how many roaches that is. But anyway. Gold, I tell you. Gold. So we're gonna get this colony set up. Get these guys some Repeshi. And if you're looking for uh, the Bug Burger and know where to get it, uh, link in the description. We sell it on our website, www.thelizardofoz.net. Www Ruthless with the plug. All right. But you should definitely be uh, checking out those Repeshi products. I'm telling you, they work great. I love them for the dragons. I love them for the feeders. Um, and we also now have the uh, Calcium Plus Up, which you can use to dust your feeders with. It's a calcium and multivitamin supplement. All right. But yeah, we're going to get these guys set up, and uh, yeah, hopefully soon these will be all adults. Okay, now in this big bin right here is our uh, main discoid colony. And this is actually the colony that I did an unboxing video on for you guys. Um, so this will be my first time ever sorting out this colony. No idea what to expect, but I'm hoping to... I'm hoping to uh, harvest a lot of uh, baby discoids from this colony. Now, I already had an existing colony before receiving this colony, which has now uh, been broken down into uh, one colony plus two growing colonies. If that's how you word that, I'm not sure. I'll show it to you guys in a second. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this colony uh, sifted and sorted out and see what we're working with. First, I needed to get this bin cleaned out, so that way I can have uh, bins to sit and separate what I harvest into, okay? So I need one bin for the uh, large adults to sit in while I'm getting the rest of the colonies sorted out, and I'm going to need another bin for the uh, smalls and possibly even mediums uh, to sit in. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and keep everything separated by size, then I would probably need a bin per uh, size that I'm looking to separate. But in my case, all I want to do is separate the babies from the adults. And by babies, I mean nymphs. And by nymphs, I am referring to any size aside from adult. Now, of course, the large nymphs that are close to adulthood, I'm going to go ahead and keep with the adults. Okay, but anything under that, I'm going to separate and start as a new colony that I will be growing up to hopefully become a producing colony. And to clean out my bins, I'm using F10. Got my spray bottle. Got my F10. Again, F10 is a veterinary disinfectant that I uh, dilute with water. And this is just a professional spray bottle. I'll put a link to the F10 as well as to the spray bottles in the description below for you guys. Remember that the uh, affiliate links in the description do help the channel and just wanna thank you guys in advance for all your support. Any of the products that you see me using that you think you might need or benefit from yourself, you can find them in the description, okay? All right. And before I even get started with this, let me go ahead and show you guys the uh, other colonies of discords that I have, okay? So, this, was my colony that I started with. Okay, nothing crazy. So this is the colony that I started with. And discoids are another Florida legal roach. This is probably the closest comparable thing to uh, keeping dubia roaches for people in Florida.
prim, pretty similar care to uh, Dubia Roaches. I want to keep egg crates. And I actually just sorted this colony out. And I uh, have a few dying off. It's a pretty old colony. Okay, so that was my starter colony. From that colony so far, I've been able to harvest all of these. Well, I harvest these as small uh, nymphs, and I've just been growing them up now. So basically, I started this colony here, which has even more discoids in them than the colony that I showed you. Okay. And this is basically a combination of two harvests. So I'm going, I'm not adding any more to this. I'm just going to let this uh, colony grow up. I don't really feed from this colony. Every now and then I might get a few out of here and give off the snacks, but you know, nothing dramatic. So let this colony grow up and reproduce. With the hopes that between that colony and the colony that I just showed you, I'll be able to grow up enough to eventually have just as many as I have in this colony right here. Okay. And for my most recent harvest, which I just did uh, a few days ago, I had this costume. It was a really good harvest, as you can see. These are all from that original uh, colony that I just showed you. So this is the start of another colony. A lot of nice sized nymphs in this in this colony right here. So we're gonna of course let this colony grow up as well. We're trying to hold back and grow up as many roaches as we can, like I said, with our long-term goal in mind of having enough colonies to become self-sustaining completely, and not only self-sustaining, but being able to provide you guys with uh, quality feeders as well on a consistent basis. So Hopefully we get a good harvest from this colony right here. Like I said, I haven't had this colony long. Did an unboxing video when I received this colony. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description. Achoo! Excuse me, guys. <coughs> and, um, yeah. But as you can see, I'm starting to sneeze. So I'm going to go ahead and get my respirator mask on. Always want to have your respirator mask when working with feeders, uh, roaches, and rodents. <coughs> this can prevent you from developing allergies in the future. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, now let's go ahead and dig in. Ooh. Look at all those smalls. Look at all those small nymphs in there. Can you see them? That's nice. Lions roaring in the morning sun. It's looking promising already. Searching for a longer day. <laughs> People feeling like the light has Oh yeah, it's looking real good, guys. We must never stop the way. Look at all those smalls. Birds chirping, I hear my name. Grasping to a love. Life is happy, but it's See those lesser mealworms here? We must merely make a You don't wanna you don't wanna get rid of those. You wanna keep those in your colony. Those are cleaner crew birds, and they help to uh, keep the smell down in your in your roach colony and dispose of dead matter in the colony, which will also help keep fruit flies out of your colony. Okay. And like I said, I haven't seen many smalls since the uh, initial ones that I showed you that were off the corner. I believe they were all all the babies were there, uh, trying to stay away from the adults for the most part. As you know, like I told you, the, uh, the males can be a little cannibalistic and eat the uh, nymphs. But uh, I'm not too much worried about that because I keep the uh, ratio pretty good. But I'm looking at some of the wings. I see there's been some wing chewing. For example, like uh, this guy right here. He doesn't have any wings. See him? Yeah. So, 
Hopefully, like I said, you get a decent harvest. But I haven't seen too many. Maybe it's a bunch of babies hiding in the trash. We'll find out. So like I said, you want to make sure when you're separating your uh, large roaches, you're putting in that temporary holding bin that you have your egg crates in there already. So that way they're not secreting that liquid on top of each other. We're going to throw another egg crate in there because these guys are a little violent. So we got the bin emptied out. We're gonna go ahead and shake these last bit of uh, roaches and fries down. Get everything uh, sorted out and then see what we're working with. And this is a good time to uh, go ahead and pick out some of the junk, some of the dead roaches. Uh, those exoskeletons or carcasses they leave. Good to have these on handy. Tongs. You know where to find them if you need them. Alright, so those are our smalls. Got a lot of uh, spreads in there and a lot of lesser mealworms. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not super excited about it. But I'm not, uh, I'm not upset about it either. Uh, we're gonna weigh it out and see what it is. Alright, the moment of truth. Let's see what we're working with. Two hundred and fifty-nine grams. Like I said, I wanted to hit at least two fifty. I noticed that a lot of these nymphs are small, small nymphs. So it's definitely possible that we got at least ten thousand uh, nymphs out of this harvest here. Like I said, I can't be mad about it. It's a huge collie, so I kind of expected a little more, really. Um, but you know, hit my goal. So, like I said, definitely not mad. All right. So, good harvest today. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this last colony of orange hay roaches and that'll be my uh the end of my harvesting uh this week but i'll let you guys see what those guys turn out to uh, look like okay so this is my uh these are my orange head roaches this is my orange head colony and this is a really small colony crazy story about this is I used to have thousands and thousands of orange heads and thousands and thousands of discoids. But then uh, I had to move. Uh, it was an unfortunate situation. I had been staying in the house for about three years. Come to find out, I'm renting a home. Come to find out that the uh, landlord wasn't paying the mortgage. And long story short, uh, you know, the bank was closing on the home. And I wasn't in a position to buy the home. Uh, so had to move it was an all of us it was a sudden move and during the process of moving a lot of my roaches uh a lot of my roach colonies began to die off because it was like uh, i was basically neglecting them because i had so much going on as far as trying to like pack up all my furniture uh get all the animals together move everybody uh you know one u-haul at a time and i had to pretty much move everything by myself my entire house that's what happens when your only friends are, are uh, bearded dragons. They, you know, they're, they're great company, but they can't help them move. <laughs> um, but honestly, I could have probably, you know, done a better job of, of uh, making sure that, you know, they didn't die off my uh, roaches and stuff. But it was a stressful situation, and I didn't, I, you know, I, I handled it. I handled it well, but I could have handled it better. Anyway, enough about me. This is my uh, orange head colony. 
Um, and I, I mean, I have some, these are just the adults. So it's a small colony. But I'm focusing in on this colony now, and you know what they say? Where attention goes, energy flows. So this colony should be growing in no time. I already got a bunch of mediums. I don't know if you can see those. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning right now, so the lights aren't on down here. So it's a little dark. Excuse the uh, shadow. I don't know if you can see those guys, but... And then I'm sure I got a bunch of smalls. And I still got a few adults left in this. Haven't cleaned this colony out in probably about six months. Just been trying to let them brood as much as they can. You can tell by their uh, egg crates. Going to be replacing all those as well as the cardboard today as well. But uh, like I said, I'll show you guys uh, a little more of this colony once I've got it. And once I've finished sorting it all out. All right, so this is the final harvest of the uh, orange heads. And like I said, I had some larger uh, mediums. I just kept those with the uh, adult colony. I'm going to just go ahead and let those grow up and just go right into the adult colony. Um, not even really too much worried about the ratio and all of that right now. And uh, one thing I love about orange heads is they're pretty fast uh, reproducers or, or breeders. They breed pretty fast. Not a bad you. It's not a great you. I mean, so it's a small colony, but uh, you know you got to start somewhere. So, you know, to to ramp up production, what I do is I'm just going to separate these guys from the adults, let these guys grow up, and then I'll just add a bunch of females from this colony into my already existing adult colony and feed off a majority of the males. Okay, I mean I might add a few males into the colony just for some fresh blood, but for the most part I'll feed off all the males. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let these grow up and that should really speed up the uh, production because it'll let these guys grow up faster because they don't have to share food with adults and I don't have to worry about any of the babies being eaten by the adults. And uh, as far as the other colony, they'll just continue to produce, they have more space uh, and they'll be able to get more food. Okay, so yep, that about sums it up. Okay, so we did orange heads, we did discoids, we did dubia, a lot of sorting Thank you guys for tuning in to another video with me, Dave McLean, here at Lizard of Oz. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and hit that notification button, guys, so you don't miss any more of our awesome episodes. Um, and in the meantime and in between time, guys, peace, love, Pagonas.